Hello everyone, welcome to Music Theory Grade 3 and we are in Week 9, brought to you by 2 and Abel. Today we're going to be discussing triads. We're going to be looking at the primary and secondary triads with key signature. What are triads? Triads are a group of three notes played together. So it's one on top of the other. They are also called chords. Now, a chord may have more notes, but a triad has only three notes. They are always built up in intervals of thirds. They are built up on root, third, and fifth. A root is the bottom note of the chord from which the third and the fifth is built. Any note in the scale, remember this, can be a root. But the scale degrees do not change. Let us look at the example. In the example, we notice that the first triad starts on a C. And because we are looking at the key signature, we realize that there are no accidentals. So that means that our key here is C major. So the first triad built on the C will be our tonic triad. And then the second triad is built up from the F, which will be the subdominant triad. And then lastly, we have the triad that is built up from the G, which will be our dominant triad. Figuring of triad. We have two different types of triads, namely the primary triads and the secondary triads. We use Roman numerals to indicate the different triads. We use capital Roman numerals for major and small letter numerals for minor triads. We also use a small plus sign to indicate augmented triads and a small circle to indicate diminished triads. Major triads or a major triad will be built with a major third and a perfect fifth. Minor triads will be built with a minor third and a perfect fifth. Let us study the table below. First of all, what we notice is that with major keys and even with minor keys, the primary triads are the same and the secondary triads are the same. The main difference between them is that in primary triads for major keys, they are all major chords because they are written in capital letters. Whereas the primary triads in minor keys, one and four, or the tonic and subdominant, are minor chords or minor triads. That's why they are written in small letter Roman numerals. But the five, which is the dominant, is capital letter. So that means that the one or the tonic and the four or the subdominant 
a minor triad and the five or the dominant is a major triad. Same in the secondary triads. In primary, the secondary triads in major keys, the supertonic triad, the median triad, the submedian triad, and the leading note triad. They are written in small, small letters to indicate that they are either minor or diminished. Now we notice that our seven or our leading note triad has got a small circle in it. So that means that it's a diminished triad. In minor keys, we have the leading note triad, we have the median, it's written in capital letters, that means, and it's got a small plus, you see that? It means it's an augmented triad. We also have the submedian triad, which is in Capital letters, that means then it's a major triad. And then we have the leading note triad. It's got a small circle. Then it means it is a diminished triad. So, secondary triads in major keys. Only the leading note triad or the seventh triad. 7th degree triad is diminished and secondary triads in minor keys the supertonic triad is diminished and also the leading note triad is diminished then the median triad is augmented and the sub median triad it is major. So we have a little note there, as I explained before. One, four, five will always be primary triads in both major and minor keys. Writing triads. We must refer to our knowledge about intervals to be able to understand the different qualities of the triad. The root tells us from which scale degree or which scale degree the triad is built. The third of the triad tells us the quality of the chord while the fifth can be altered for a diminished or an augmented triad. The diminished and augmented triads naturally exist in the harmonic minor key. Another thing, if the third is a major interval from the root and the fifth is unaltered, then the triad will be a major triad. If the third is a minor interval from the root and the fifth is unaltered, then the triad will be a minor triad. Lastly, the augmented triad only appears with the major third interval and the diminished triad only with the minor third interval. Let us look at the examples below and compare the different triads. As I said, the same with intervals. Triads. Always think in terms of the root as a major key. Let us look at major triads. 
we have already seen that if the root is C and we know that in C major nothing is altered no not any note is altered then we understand that we will have a major triad because from the root C to the third E it's a major third and from C to the fifth G it's a perfect fifth so that must be a major triad the second one we have G as our bottom note there's our bottom note G from G to B it's a major third from G to D it's a perfect fifth so that means it's a major triad now looking at this triad over here we notice that the bottom note is a A flat from A flat to C we know it's a major third from A flat to E flat we know that in A major we have E flat so that makes it a perfect fifth that's why it is a major triad then we come to the D from D to F sharp it's a major third why because when we think about the D major it has a F sharp in it so it's a major third and does C does D major have A yes the A is unaltered so from D to A then it's a perfect fifth that's why it's a major triad so these are the different kinds of major triads that we have here they are just examples you will have to learn how to determine the quality of the triads by yourselves we have also minor triads we start with the C again now we notice that between C and E flat it's a third but what kind of a third is it or what type of a third is it it is a minor third because the E is altered by a half step which makes it an E flat and then what do we see from C to G the G is not altered so that means it's a perfect fifth that's why it's a minor triad let's look at the A flat now with the A flat in A flat scale do we have a C flat no we don't have a C flat so that means our C has been altered by a half step which makes it a minor third and then do we have a E flat in A flat major yes we do so that makes it a perfect fifth so it is a minor triad we move right along to the diminished triad we go back to our C again 
As I said, the diminished child only appears with the minor third interval. Let us check. C to E flat is a minor third. Great, we have the minor third. Now, the fifth must be altered a half step below so that we can have a diminished interval between C and the fifth, which is G. Has the G been altered? Yes, it has been altered by a half step. So, that means that it is a diminished triad because it's got a diminished fifth and a minor third. Let us look at our A flat. A flat and C flat, they form an interval of a minor third. A flat and E double flat. What interval do they form? We know that in A flat major, we do have an E flat. So that will be a perfect fifth. But if we have an A double flat, that means the E has been altered. A half step lower, which makes it a diminished Fifth. That's why it's a diminished triad. Let's look at the augmented triads now. Back to the C. Remember that an augmented triad only appears with the major third. So we know that from C to E, it's a major third. Good enough. Now, from C to G sharp, we know that in C we don't have sharps or flats. So the fifth has been altered by a half step higher, which makes it an augmented fifth. Let us now look at the A flat again. We know that the A flat only exists or rather the A flat augmented triad will have to appear with a major third. So between A flat and C is it a major third? Yes, it's a major third. And now we know that in order for us to have the augmented triad, the fifth must be altered by a half step higher. It must be raised. So we see here the E has been raised. So that will be our augmented triad. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.